Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Welcome back to the e-commerce badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster. How are you feeling today, friend? If you're listening to this in real time, we're just a few weeks into the new year with big goals and ready to finally get our businesses dialed in. We're ready to grow and make shit happen. There's something so magical about the start of a new year, right? And I'm totally with you. A quick reminder, though, every day is a new day to work on your business. Famous words by previous podcast guest Rishi Rawit, episode 26, if you've never listened to it. So if you do feel like you're behind, the short answer is today is a new day. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Our ideal customer. And everyone talks about this, you've heard me talk about this, and you might already think you know who your ideal customer is, but I encourage you to revisit this ideal customer on a regular basis. And of course, the new year is a great time to do this. Now, before you leave this episode, because you think, nah, I totally have this dialed in. I want you to think about how your life has changed in the last year or even the last six months and how your priorities, struggles, pain points, etc., have changed in your own life. The same is true for your customers. As humans, we are evolving all the time, just like your business is constantly evolving. And that's why doing the ideal customer exercise once in your business isn't enough. Additionally, not only are we going to lay the foundation today, but we're also going to talk about what to actually do with that information. For the sake of today's episode, I'm not going to go through every step of this process, but don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. If you're already on my email list, you have access to my free resource library where I have a PDF worksheet that walks you through this entire process. And if you're not already on my email list, what are you waiting for, darling? Go to ecommercebadassery.com forward slash free stuff to sign up and then check your inbox for instant access to my entire library of every freebie I've ever created to grow your e-commerce business. And... If you haven't already heard, at the time of this recording, I'm going to be doing weekly live Q&A events in the e-commerce badassery Facebook group where you can come and ask me questions about what you heard on the podcast. It's a new weekly feature I'm trying out. So if you're not listening to this in real time, I can't guarantee that you'll see anything live, but the replay for this episode will be in there for you to listen to. Okay, let's hop into it. What I really want to focus on today and the part that so many of us miss are the psychographics of our ideal customer and what the fuck are psychographics. Psychographics is defined as the study and classification of people according to their attitudes, aspirations, and other psychological criteria, especially in market research. So this is where you really start to dig deep into who this person is at their core. We're going beyond the surface level shit, figuring out what stage they're at in their life, what really matters to them, how they decide what products to buy and what topics around your product do they care about. What I want you to remember is that marketing a product is not actually about your product. It's how that product can make their life better, solve their problem, or make them feel good. When you understand this, when you understand what makes them tick, you can then more easily craft content and experiences in a way that makes them say, you get me. The download I mentioned has an example for you around positioning a high-end skincare brand. It shows the marriage behind the demographics info, their age, income, etc., 
and the psychographic information and how you can combine those to figure out what's important to them. It even has a little visual for you. So if you're near a computer and you want to grab that download now to follow along, feel free to do that. In this particular example, we have a 36-year-old female fashion writer who lives in Los Angeles. She's married with no kids, has a household income of 300 k per year, and drives a BMW convertible. That's her demographical info. Now, when we dig a little deeper, we know that she's a spender, not a saver. VIP experiences and prestige are important to her. She's a feminist, a dog mom. She loves makeup, travel, and cares about the environment. Now that we know this, we can create branding, content, messaging, and product variations that speak directly to her. So how do we translate that? Let's pretend it's not COVID and leisure travel is still a thing. In addition to our full-size products, we may want to offer TSA-approved travel sizes so she can jet set and keep her skin fresh. And because we know she's an environmentalist, we'll want to talk about our eco-friendly packaging and manufacturing processes. As someone who travels a lot and likely attends events as a writer, it's possible she drinks a bit too much bubbly on occasion. So we can talk about the hydration our products give her skin the morning after. We'll also want to tell we're cruelty-free and not tested on animals since she's a dog owner and that's probably important to her. And as a feminist, she'll want to support a female-owned company or one that contributes to female causes. Plus, because prestige is important to her, she'll appreciate being treated like a VIP, so a rewards program with higher level tiers for your most loyal customers, think Sephora's Rouge level, is a great way to keep her coming back to our business. So that's the messaging part, but how else can we use this information? If we go back to the packaging piece, not only do we want it to be eco-friendly because we know that that's important to her, but we'll want to make sure it has a luxurious look as well. You may automatically gravitate toward using foil printing, for example, but is that eco-friendly? I'm not sure, but if it's not, maybe something more minimalistic would be a better way to go. Sleek white or black packaging also exhibits a luxurious look. Let's think about your imagery. We want to include people that look like her and that she resonates with. So focus on models that are people she might go to brunch with or go out, you know, for a girl's night. And if we go back to those messaging pieces like hydrating your skin after enjoying too much bubbly, for example, maybe your imagery is actually a girl's night out or something like that. When it comes to creating content for this person, think beyond just your product. What else does she care about? Because she's likely career focused, she's probably often found in events, making connections. You can talk about being confident at networking events, for example, and how caring for your skin and knowing you look great is just one way to show up as your best self. You'll also want to adjust your messaging based on what's happening in her life right now. So if we're still dealing with COVID, she's likely attending virtual events where all others see is her face. This makes her skincare routine even more important. So you can talk about that. Give tips on how to look great on camera. And it all starts with staying hydrated and keeping up with your skincare routine. This is also a great jumping off point for partnering with other complementary brands. Let's run with the virtual event or Zoom meeting example. If you do an educational event around looking great on camera, you can partner with a jewelry brand and a CBD brand, for example. Your messaging can talk about waking up refreshed after a great night's sleep with CBD, having great skin with your skincare products, and showing your personality with great jewelry from the neck up. And the way you partner with these other brands doesn't necessarily have to be hosting a virtual event, though live video is so powerful, even for product-based businesses. Maybe you just do a newsletter swap where you all agree to share each other's products, and to make it even more lucrative for one another, you can each join 
each other's affiliate programs to earn commission on any of the other brand's products that you sell through your own newsletter. If it makes sense, you can even create a product bundle where they get the customer will get a kick-ass deal if they buy all of your products in one shot. So are you seeing how you can kind of take the information and use it to drive all of your business decisions? Now that you have an idea of how it works, let's dig even deeper. I'm going to run through the questions that are in the workbook and give them a little bit more color. I want to focus this all around one product so you can really see how this comes together. I was just recently talking to some others in the product space about growing a CBD brand. So let's use that as an example, and we'll build it out with female entrepreneurs as our target customers. One quick disclaimer here is that in terms of CBD, there are a lot of rules and regulations around what you can and can't say, the types of claims you can make about your product. So if you happen to be a CBD brand listening to this, because I know there are some of you in my audience, make sure you're following all the necessary rules. And I would have used a different product, but these ideas have already been swirling around in my head from the conversations I had. So I'm just going to go with it. Now, I'm not going to go super deep into every question included in the workbook because that would make this a very long episode, but it should give you a good sense of how to translate the information when you do the workbook on your own. So first question, what are their attitudes and mindset around topics that relate to your product and industry? So here's some thoughts I had. Considering that CBD has been pretty prominent in the online space, they're probably already familiar with it and curious about using it, but they're not super versed in the product itself and aren't really sure how to pick the best one. It's also likely they've heard amazing things from their peers about it and want to potentially incorporate it into their life, but they're not really sure where to start or how to best utilize it. They've also probably come across some really big brands and they might be hesitant to trust a smaller brand because they might think it's dangerous or not as good of quality. It's also possible that they've tried other brands and didn't really see any positive results. So how do we take this information and turn it into messaging that will resonate with our customers? Because she's not super well-versed in CBD and doesn't really understand the product, we know we need to educate her on CBD. We'll want to talk about where it comes from, how it's made, the different types, what makes them different. That's a total no-brainer and should be a content pillar of any CBD brand. We'll also want to educate her on how to get started with it and actually incorporate it into her life. We can share our own story of how it's helped us and how we use it. We can share other stories of influencers we work with, customer testimonials, etc. And we're going to have to work really hard on growing the trust factor with our potential customers because we are a small brand. When you are selling something that people ingest or put in their body or on their body, there is an additional layer of hesitation that we have to break through. Even with something like eye makeup, I'm probably not going to buy eye makeup from a dollar store. I'm sure it's perfectly fine, but I have preconceived notions about the quality of that product and I certainly don't want to put it on my eyes. And lastly, we need to address their fear that the product might not work for them. So in the case of CBD, this is where we also want to educate them on the different types of CBD and that they're not all created equal. We also need to make sure that the customer understands that the best results come from regular use. So using it for seven days isn't necessarily enough time to determine its success. And we might want to offer a money back guarantee. I know as a small business, it can feel like a recipe for a lot of lost money, but consider how the increase in conversion can pay for the few bottles that you may have to take back. The truth about things like money back guarantees is that a lot of people don't actually take advantage of them. I don't have any statistics in front of me right now, but if you research this, you'll see things like money back guarantees, rebates, and even gift cards. Shit tons of money go unclaimed. So if you're just getting started or you're struggling to catch traction, it might be worth it to just test this out for a little bit and see if it moves the needle for you. Next up, 
What are their aspirations, goals, dreams, and wishes? What do they want for this world, their life, or results from your products? As a female entrepreneur, they want to see more female leaders. They want to make an impact on their community and see other female CEOs thrive. They want to do big things in the world, which means they need to focus and have clarity in their day-to-day life, and they're hoping CBD can help them with that. I want to give another quick example here in terms of the results someone would want so you can see the difference. If the customer we were targeting were an older woman with arthritis, the results she would want from your product would be pain relief so she can get back to gardening or running around after her grandchildren. The messaging that we would use for these two people are very different. So I just wanted to make sure you had that other perspective. So what do you do with this information? Again, Again, this is where you'll want to share your story and other people's stories who have gotten those results she's looking for. What have they accomplished in their business since starting a CBD regimen? Because they have so much more clarity and focus, what has that changed in their life and business? Now, I'm no fan of big pharma, but think about the commercials you see for prescription drugs. Those commercials are showing the transformation of the user after they started using the product. So if we're talking about eczema, it will show them pulling down their sleeve, all awkward in a group of people because they don't want anyone to see. And then they show them wearing a tank top and they're the center of attention with friends out to dinner or at a picnic, right? So it's the before and the after. It's not about the product itself and all the features of it. It's about the result and the transformation that the product can give you. Okay, so now you might be thinking, all right, sure, this is really easy with a product that actually solves a problem like this, but what if I'm just selling clothes in a boutique? Well, the same principle applies, my friend. Let's run a bit with this example so you can see how it all comes together. Let's say we have a clothing boutique with trendy items. We'll use my previous boutique as the example. I sold contemporary denim brands like Hudson and James Jeans. I also had Michael Starr's tees, Gypsy 05 maxi dresses, which I don't even think they're around anymore, and going out tops from some smaller brands like Haley Bob and Prairie New York. For my customer, there were a few different things at play, and one of them was status. I was in an upscale neighborhood, and while of course my customers bought these higher-end brands of jeans because they did fit really well, it was also because they were recognizable. If you had a pair of Hudson jeans on that had a flap back pocket, everyone knew they were Hudson jeans. And even if they didn't have the flap back detail, the little flag tag they had, that was also recognizable. Just like a pair of Louboutin shoes with a red bottom or a Valentino rock stud. Also, my customer loved getting a new top to wear with her jeans for Friday or Saturday night out, whether it was a date with her husband or a girl's night out. So I knew that my tops, for instance, had to be reasonably priced because they would want to come back and buy more. And why do we buy clothes? Why do we care what we wear? Because when we look good, we feel good. When we feel sexy, we have more confidence. Heels make us stand taller, which in turn gives us more confidence. When we understand how to dress our shape to highlight the things we love about our bodies and camouflage the things that we don't, we feel more powerful. So I wasn't selling the flap on the back of the Hudson jeans. I wasn't even really selling the fact that they fit well. I was selling that the flaps made your butt look rounder that the mid-rise camouflaged your belly pooch, and that a straight leg jean would make your hips look smaller, or that this sweetheart neckline top would make your cleavage look amazing so you could go out on date night and feel confident and have your partner drooling over you, or that you could just feel like you had it all together and could conquer anything. Another really important question to ask is, what are their objections to buying your product? In the CBD example, we touched on this already a bit in terms of them not being sure if your product is safe and whether or not it will work for them. And they also may be wondering if CBD can get them high or if they would test positive on a drug test. 
I'll give another example from a client I worked with recently who sells make your own nail polish kits. The kit comes with a base formula for the nail polish and then color pigments and such for you to mix your own color. One of the biggest objections her customer had was, what if I screw it up? What if I mix the colors wrong, use the wrong amount? There was so much anxiety around the actual creation of the color itself. What we did know, though, was that once they did it the first time and they see how easy it actually is, they just want to keep doing more. But getting them over that initial first hump was really difficult. So the marketing and messaging for those first-time customers is heavily focused on overcoming that one objection. And she's also creating more content, guides, and tools to express that hey, you can't screw it up because it can always be fixed and to walk them through the actual process of creating the colors, etc. You should also think through what the day-to-day -day activities of your ideal customer looks like. Think of it as a day in the life. What is it like to be in their shoes? And think about the most basic mundane things so that you can relate to them on a personal level. And some questions you can ask yourself are, are they an early riser or a night owl? Are they constantly chauffeuring their kids around? Are they currently homeschooling them? Do they have a long commute to work? Do they listen to podcasts? What are their favorite TV shows to binge? Do they cook or are they more of a takeout kind of girl? How do they relax and unwind? When you know the answers to these questions, you can then use this lighter type of content to connect with them, to relate to them. Figure out what you have in common, what you're also experiencing, and how you present it to them will depend on the voice of your brand. If you've got a humorous vibe, you can add some memes into your rotation. This is great content in general for Instagram stories, since that has a more behind the scenes vibe and is more about reaching your existing followers than gaining new ones. In addition to these more open-ended questions, you're also going to want to look at your hard data and numbers. So you'll want to figure out things like who uses your product the most, how, why, and when do they use it? Also, why and when would they make a repeat purchase? Is your product consumable, like in the case of CBD? Do they just want something new, like in the case of a clothing boutique? Is it a hobby for them? Is it part of their self-care? And what content is resonating with them most right now? Look at the subject lines that get the best open rates, the social media posts with the best engagement, and the blog posts with the most reads. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, great, but where do I actually get this information from? Well, that depends. If you're just starting your business, you're going to have to make some educated guesses. You'll have to do some market research, talk to some people that you think you want to sell to. If you are your own ideal customer, think about how you would answer these questions. Going back to the CBD example, there was a time when you were a newbie too. What were your preconceived notions, questions, and hesitations about using CBD? Go to where you think your customer is and start talking to people. If you find that they're not there, awesome. That's amazing insight and move on to the next platform. Go look at reviews of other companies in your industry. What are those customers saying? Get yourself in groups around these topics. What are people saying? What are they asking? What are they using it for? What stories are they telling? A word of caution here. Do not ask friends and family unless they are your ideal customer or are a successful marketer. Now, I'm not saying they won't have any value to bring as a consumer in general, but it's very possible they will send you down the wrong path. They will have their own limiting beliefs about what's possible. This example I'm going to give you isn't super related, but when I finally decided to quit my nine to five and go all in on e-commerce badassery, my mother didn't know until it was already done. And it's not because she didn't believe in me or wasn't supportive, but she comes from the corporate life of fake security. And I knew she'd want to talk about it and make sure it was the right decision. 
And I knew that that would throw my confidence and that I would probably chicken out. And also, I'm a grown-ass fucking woman, and me and my husband make the decisions together. (laughs) And when I did tell her, and I was explaining why she didn't hear about it until it was already done, I couldn't get the words out before she laughed and said, I would have wanted to talk about it. In simpler terms, it's like asking someone who can't smell if they like the scent of your candle. If you've already been in business a while, then you're going to have hard data to work from. Go and look at the reviews you're receiving, good and bad. Look at the customer service inquiries you're getting. What keeps coming up? If you're getting return requests, why are they returning? When you start to see patterns, you know what you need to address. An example of this, and I'm having major deja vu. I can't remember if I told this story on a podcast episode already, if it was in in a clubhouse room or another podcast I was a guest on, but at my previous job, we had this one particular product that was getting a lot of poor reviews, and there was a common theme which showed us that it was actually user error, and that was the reason why they weren't having a good experience with the product. So We knew we had to add more education about the use of that product. So that is content now that we can create and put on the product page, add it into a post-purchase email, and make sure we always talk about that when promoting that specific product on social media. And never underestimate the value of your frontline workers and the insights they have about your customers the ones who are communicating with them on a regular basis. And that's why I'll always encourage you to tap into that when you're doing your campaign recaps and analyzing your business. One last note I want to touch on here before we wrap it up, and that's for those of you who are doing wholesale. Your wholesale customers are also customers. It's up to you to give them all the tools they need to represent and sell your product. So think about their experience with your brand as well, from how you first reach out to them through the entire journey of them working with you. What do they need to know and understand about your brand and products to successfully sell it to their customers? If you know that people typically have a certain objection about buying from you, let's use the make your own nail polish kit as an example. They need to know that so they can also address that objection on their website and when they promote your product. Because if they can't sell it, they're not going to reorder from you. Okay, this was a long one today. It's been a while since I've had such a long episode. A few housekeeping items before we go. Like I mentioned at the time of this recording, I'll be hosting live Q&As in the e-commerce badassery Facebook group to answer any questions you have about the topic we covered on the podcast. Additionally, to get your hands on the Ideal Customer Workbook, which includes the questions we went over today and additional questions to help you flesh out who you're talking to, head to ecommercebadassery.com forward slash free stuff to sign up for it. And lastly, If you're on Clubhouse, which is super popular and still invite only at the time of this recording, come and find me. I'll be hosting some rooms with other experts in the space to chat all things e-commerce, marketing, products, Facebook ads, and just all around business growth. You can just search my name, Jessica Totillo Coster, T-O-T-I-L-L-O-C-O-S-T-E-R to find me. And my username is J Totillo Coster. E-commerce badassery is too long. It's a limit of characters you can use. So I'm thinking I might change it to e-com badassery with just, you know, E-C-O-M-M. But I can only change my username once, so I'm having trouble committing. (laughs) Okay, friend, thanks for hanging out today. I appreciate you and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking to surround yourself with more product entrepreneurs who totally get your life right now, get your booty on over to the e-commerce badassery Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there. Until next time, e-commerce friends, stay badass.